Washington football fans, sorry that I didn't have a video yesterday. I was feeling under the weather. Just really couldn't do it. And, well, it wasn't necessarily all because of the uh, game on Sunday, but it happens. But I'm back here for another video, and let's talk a little bit about what happened in the game on Sunday. Now, I didn't get home until the second half, but, of course... I missed probably the best part of the football game in terms of how the Washington football team played. The defense uh, seemed like they played better as a as a whole, as a unit. Uh, the defensive front four, they were getting pressure uh, up front uh, to Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, I was happy to see this because this is something that had been absent for several of the the games at the start of the season. You just saw nobody even get anywhere close to the quarterback. And, you know, they were getting pressure to Aaron Rodgers, and they were, you know, but then again, it's Aaron Rodgers. So the dude is like calm, cool, and collected, right? So, you know, I, I did not expect us to win this football game. But here's the thing. It's one of those things where the Packers did not beat us. The Washington football team beat themselves a lot of times because they left, what, 17 points on the board. I mean, they could have easily had 24 points in this game as well. Taylor Haneke got called back for that uh, touchdown run where he, he dove too early the referee said that he was giving himself up. All right, I have never, maybe the rules have changed, but from what I have always understood, if a quarterback is diving like that, he's not giving himself up. That's the reason why you tell your quarterback to slide. If they're sliding, they're giving themselves up. If they're diving, then they're trying to make a play. They're trying to get an extra yard, trying to score. Whatever the case is, he was not touched. It should not have mattered that his knee was down at that point. He was not touched. Now, provided Taylor Heineke had a clear path to the end zone, he didn't need to dive. He could have just kept running in the end zone. He would have not been touched, and he would have scored. So it was a little bit of a boneheaded thing on Taylor Heineke's part. And then, of course, you know, the, the fourth down try where he fumbled the ball, tried to pick it up, and put it over the goal line. You know, again, that is another one of those iffy, touchy calls that because you're playing in Green Bay, the call is almost never going to go your way unless you're a Packers fan. I mean, that's just, that's just the case. And... Us as Washington fans, we enjoyed this back in the heyday, back in our glory years. When we played at home, we got a lot of calls our way. I mean, I'll admit this. That seems to be the case. When you're one of the elite teams in the league and you're playing at home, you're going to get the calls. And Washington just did not get the calls their way. And so, yeah, it's a little bit of playing against the refs, but... You know, that that's kind of what you're going to expect in games like this. So, yeah, Taylor Heineke, overall, though, he played a little bit more of like his old self. You know, scrambling around, trying to make plays. I thought he played pretty well. The, uh, the I guess you call it fumble, um, the fumbled pass. That was kind of an unfortunate thing. It was kind of a fluke thing. It happens to the best of the quarterbacks. So, you know, I'm not going to fault him on that too much. Although, well, I, I mean, what what could he really have done in that situation? It's just it's going to happen. <clears throat> excuse me. It's just going to happen at one point or another in your career as a quarterback. But getting back to the defense uh, for a little bit, of course, Ron Rivera moved. Landon Collins closer to the line. He was playing more of a linebacker role, and he played much better. Of course, he wasn't in coverage, and you know he didn't get burnt a lot. It just seems to be more of a natural role for Landon Collins. As much as he probably despises that fact, 
he is playing much better when he is at the line. He's making more plays. He's being able to stop running backs. I mean, that's where he needs to be right now. And if he's truly a team player and he truly wants to help the team win, then that's where he needs to stay for the rest of the season. And if not there, he needs to be on the bench. I mean, that's about all you can really say about that. Uh, Danny Johnson, I thought he played pretty well for the most part. Um, you know, you're going to get burnt by Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams and, you know, guys like that. So that that's a given. But I think overall, he didn't play any worse than what we've seen out of William Jackson III. I would probably just roll with Danny Jacks or Danny Johnson and say, hey, you're going to be the corner for the rest of the season because I have just been so unimpressed by William Jackson III. It's just been horrible. And, uh, you know, I, I just, that experiment, I don't know if we can cut ties after the season or not, but we need to. We really need to because he has just not produced at all. And honestly, him not playing in this game probably helped that secondary a little bit more than, than what we <laughs> realized and imagined. But, you know, overall, I, I felt the defense made some plays. Uh, they certainly did their best. I mean, when your offense puts your defense into a situation where it's a short field, I mean, there's not a lot they can do about that, especially against the Aaron Rodgers. I mean, there's just not much you can do with that. But, you know, shifted back to the offensive side of the ball, Antonio Gibson, another YouTuber, said that he is starting to trek into uh, Matt Jones' territory. <clears throat> and I, I kind of believe him because Antonio Jones, uh, Antonio Jones, oh my dear Lord, I'm saying it. Antonio Gibson, he has really been a fumbler this year, you know. You can probably forgive a fumble here and there or a fumble that he gets back, but it's starting to become a habit with him. And it has really cost us in games as well. And as much as I like Antonio Gibson, he's got a lot of upside to him. He's going to have to solve his fumbling problems. You know, he can be an outstanding back. He really can. But he is going to have to learn to hold on to the ball. I mean, here's the thing. You turn the ball over, you're going to lose. Nine times out of ten, that, that's what happens. But Antonio Gibson is going to have to try to figure out how that he can you know, stay close, you know, just, just keep the, the football in his hands. I mean, you, you look at Tiki Barber, uh, back when he was playing, he had an issue fumbling the football, and you know, Tom Coughlin was just so upset with that. They worked on it during the offseason. Tiki Barber kind of changed up how that he, you know, held the football, held it more high and tight. And the fumbling issues stopped. He didn't have any more fumbling issues. And I think that's something that Antonio Gibson is going to need to work on in the offseason if he's going to stay on this football team. You know, overall, there were a lot of, um, you know, shots in the foot, so to speak, with the Washington offense. They had their chances. They moved the ball up and down the field, no problem. It's just, you know, being able to punch it in for a score. Against a defense that has allowed touchdowns and red zones in almost every single trip, except for the Washington football team. I mean, of course, we are always people's get right game right you know it's like oh this team has not been able to you know make a, a a first down on a third down ever this season and you know suddenly they're averaging 80 percent on third down against us you know it's like we are everybody's get right game we are everybody's homecoming game it seems like i mean we're, we're just right now we're a bad team that's that's all it is to it we are a very bad team, and there are a lot of issues and a lot of holes that we didn't realize that we thought we had filled, but we have not filled. So Ron Rivera has a long ways to go to get this team back into competitive mode. Last year was a, a fluke. It was a farce. I mean, basically, we had the luck of playing in a really, really bad division that honestly, you know, 
nobody wanted and anybody could have had. <laughs> Probably even with a five-win season, it seems like. So this year, that's not happening. You know, Dallas has played pretty well up, up until the point of Dak Prescott getting hurt. So, you know, yeah, you can, you can kind of say that Philadelphia is going to be easy to beat. Uh, the Giants, we beat them once. We might be able to, to score another win against them. And, you know, so those could be some games that we, we win. This Sunday is definitely a must-win game for the Washington football team. They are, what, 2-5? If they lose this game at two and six, I mean, you, you are pretty much saying that this the season is over. Two, I mean, three and five, you're still on the brink. So this is the must win game for the Washington football team. They have to win this game. If they can win this game, I think they have a bye the following week. They go into the bye, they can get you know healthy again, healed up a little bit. And then we're back on uh, the tough schedule against Tampa Bay. Certainly nobody expects us to win that game, but, you know, that, that's a few weeks from now. Anyway, I'll just leave you with this. I know a lot of us have been struggling with this team. Uh, a lot of people are fed up with Ron Rivera already. Um, a lot of people have been fed up with how things have been handled this year. A lot of people are fed up with the offseason season drama that seems to always surround this franchise and I get it man I really do I get it um you know I love Ron Rivera loved him when he was in Carolina so you know I, I'm one of those who is willing to give him you know a, a longer opportunity will will the <laughs> cut will willing to give him um, I, I'm not, I'm not editing these folks, so it's raw. Willing to give Ron Rivera the benefit of the doubt and two or three seasons. Now, this is his second season, so if this is going to be a wasted season, so be it. But by season three, I do expect improvement. I do expect a team that should be starting to compete for the playoffs. Seriously. And if it doesn't happen then we do have to take a look at Ron Rivera and say, you may not be the right person for this job. As much as I hate it, because I do, I love Ron Rivera a lot, but I'm also a realist, and I'm willing to see that if he's not the right guy for the job, we need to get somebody else for the job. Also, that being said, we can't expect to ever build a winning organization if we switch coaches every two or three years. You're just rinse and repeat. This is what we have done for the past 20 years. You really want to stay on that merry-go-round or do you eventually want to say, you know what, it's going to be painful for a little bit, but we've got 20 plus years of losing that we have to reverse and undo. Are you willing to stick it out and be a tough fan and to move on and to try to stick with this team? Or are you going to say enough is enough? Let's just keep on this merry-go-round. Me personally, I'm tired of, of having things switched up every now and then. Ron Rivera has probably been the best coach, honestly. Uh, Integrity-wise and, and whatnot that we've had in a long time. I'm willing to stick it out with him. Uh, and I hope you are too. Alright, this video has been incredibly long. Sorry about that, but... Didn't have a video yesterday. Wanted to kind of fit in everything that I want to talk about in this video, um, warts and all. So you guys have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe, please. And, you know, like, comment, share, and I will see you in the next one.